guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about the Good and the Beautiful's math curriculum. We are going to be doing grades three and grade four for both of my girls this year. I'm going to go ahead and do a flip through of what's all inside. Okay, so this is everything you're going to need for math grade three. It's going to come with your manipulatives box, the course book, and the answer key. So you can order the answer key. Um, I think it's like $11.99 or I just printed mine. Um, cause if you print it, it's free. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the manipulatives box first. So this is everything that's in it. It's going to come with a whiteboard. Now they did recall this because I guess the whiteboard was coming apart or something. So when you order it new, the whiteboard should be detached. It won't be like attached to, to the lid. It's going to come with your array mat and you just use, um, like expo markers on it it's going to come with one of these tape measures it's going to come with um, these little magnetic pieces these are um, for different games that um, your child gets to play um, in their lessons paper clip some dice and some game pieces. And the teacher guide is, it's honestly, it doesn't really like walk you through a whole lot um, exactly how to teach it or anything. It's just, it gives the answers. That's pretty much it. But for grade three, I'm not super concerned because it is, it is pretty easy. <laughs> Okay, so the course book. So this book, um, this will be my second time using this because Addison used this last year. So what you want to do when you first get this book, you want to go to about the middle of the book and you're going to lay it completely flat like this because the binding on it is a little bit different. But once you do that, anytime you go to it, it'll start like just laying flat and it'll be easier the more you use it. But the, I actually, I really do like the binding on this. So the way it's broken down... It's going to show you your table of contents of all the lessons. It has multiplication charts. So sometimes in, um, depending on the lesson, it will prompt you when to have the child practice their multiplication. It's going to have in this little box up here, extra supplies that are going to be needed for the lessons from one through 30. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a flip through so you can kind of see. Come on, move it. Okay. You can kind of see how long the lessons are. So let's look at lesson two. Right here, they're going to have a little section. It's usually for your, um, I think it's usually for your mental math. Let me look back to lesson one to double check. Okay, so sometimes it'll be something a little bit different, but this is basically something they need to do um, with you or they can do independently and it's gonna be done before the lesson. So let's look at lesson two, addition with regrouping and review. So, and also um, this is probably, we didn't do math two from The Good and the Beautiful, but I'm assuming that uh, the first few lessons may be review from the previous grade level, but um, it's so easy. I mean, it's, it literally, literally says, read to the child. It gives you exactly what to say. It tells you what you need to use. Um, and it's, it really is open and go for the most part. Um, and I don't know, I just feel like it's really easy and it's fun, Every, especially for the reluctant math learner. They, maybe your child doesn't really like math. They, I think they'll like the good and the beautiful. It's very colorful. And each section of the page, there's just completely something different. And there's lots of games. Um, see how the pages are kind of getting stuck together, but it does, it stops doing that after you've used the book for quite a bit. So this is a fun game. They would take a paper clip and they would put it right here. You'd hold a pencil up and you would just spin. So if I have a pencil here, you'd flick that kind of like a spinner. And it's just a fun game. It makes math a little bit more, um, less scary. <laughs> um, so I'll just kind of flip through. And so what you'll notice in the book is these purple pages. So when you get to a purple page, so you do a lesson a day, you get to the purple page, which is your unit assessment. They have to, 
do this independently. So if they do the purple section and they get it right and they understand it, then they don't need to do the bottom section and they can move on to the next. You just want to make sure that the child is understanding everything in the unit before they move on to the next unit. Um, so if, you know, I have Haley do this and she's struggling a bit, I'm going to go ahead and have her do the extra practice work on it before we move on to the next section. Um, and it just depends. Like for me, I do not make them do the whole assessment in a day. I will break it up unless they're like moving through rather quickly. Then, I, then I'm like, okay, we'll just do the whole thing. But if they're struggling a bit and I'll have them do the additional practice, I'm not, I, I break it up within two days to have them finish that. Um, then you'll go to the unit two and it's going to show you all the supplies you need for that. And the supplies are simple. It's like stuff that you have at your house already. Um, so it's not like you really have to go out and get anything other than your regular school supplies you might have for the year. And so that is math grade three. Let's move on to math four. So the course book, the teacher answer key, and you're going to have this mental math. So math four does not come with a manipulatives box. So this is just going to be, we'll flip through it just so you can see. It's the same thing I have for grade three. It's just giving you all the answers. It, like I said, it doesn't, um, it doesn't quite explain it, like how you came to the answer to explain it to the child, but if it does in the book a little bit better. But so we're doing BJU for my son and that teacher guide is a lot more. Um, it just explains it a little bit more in depth. But again, at this math grade levels, they're very simple. So um, in the course book, it'll prompt us when to use the mental math. Let's see. So I would hold the book like this to um, Addison, right? And so if she's looking at lesson one, I I'm looking at lesson one at the same time. So she would be on this side, I'm gonna be on this side. And I, it's just that after we do lesson one, I would ask her these questions and I'm gonna check it and make sure she got it correct. Then we would do the same thing for lesson two. It's just like a little bit extra review and that's that whole entire book. Oh, I forgot to show you. So at the back of the book, um, there is a story. Okay, hold on. Let me get to it real quick. Okay, so when she finishes, um, she gets to read this book in the back. And there are stickers also in the back of the book that she gets to use on a different part in this book. And that is that book. And then let's go ahead and look at the course book. Like I said, again, you're going to take it in the middle and you're going to lay it completely flat. And then I promise, I know some of the pages stick, but they don't after you've been opening and go. And then it just lays flat and it's, the pages don't tear out or anything like that. It's going to be the same thing as course um, three. It's going to show you the supplies that you need for lessons one through 30. But this one's a little bit different than course three. So you're going to have these QR codes right here so you, you'll scan it on your phone and there's actually video lessons um, so I know Addie's excited to do some of the video lessons this year because they didn't have that in course three um, so that'll be that'll be interesting for us to kind of use like the computer and stuff like that um, but yeah it's the same thing I I will say it does appear that the lessons are a little bit longer um, than than uh, grade three, but maybe by a little bit, it kind of varies, it looks like. But um, yeah, again, with the QR codes. Um, so yeah, it just, it's basically the same thing. It's just a grade level ahead. We we just really love the layout of it. Um, it does make it easy. I, I feel like when we were using Horizons Math, um, it was very boring, it was very repetitive. Uh, so one thing about The Good and the Beautiful that we do really like is that it's spiral learning. So they'll introduce a new lesson, right? And then, um, like, let's say they're gonna introduce geometry, okay? So you may see it kind of sprinkled in throughout again. And so you'll go again into another lesson and they may be introducing geometry again. So the concept of it is they really want the child to um, learn it and then over time. So it kind of sticks with them, but there's just, it's, it's just really beautiful book. And 
like it just makes math less scary you know I mean I, I wasn't a fan of math when I was a kid and I know that my girls aren't either but we do really like this book okay so then again it goes you'll, your purple pages are going to prompt your unit assessment so same thing if she does this and she's got no problem I'm not making her do the additional practice we go back into it again if and like I said, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's really easy. It really doesn't. I think last year I only really had to have them practice, do the additional practice, like maybe, maybe two times. I don't remember them having to do it a lot. Um, but yeah, so that is the flip through of the good and the beautiful. I have nothing but good things to say about this math. I've, we've been homeschooling for a while and there's a ton of different math I've used and this is the best out there. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.